So I just wanted to do a quick video on what makes the TMB so special and why it is in fact uh, leading the industry in recoil reduction um, and just kind of why it kind of has to just based on the design um, and the, uh, the internal geometry of the brake just so uh, you guys can digest and understand what the TMB is doing um, and what separates it from other products on the market. So the TMB didn't always look like this. Um, it was originally the brake, uh, which is one piece, and all of the internal geometry was machined from the outside. The TMB is now five pieces, just the muzzle brake. So it's four inserts and they're held in place by eight uh, pins. And then the muzzle brake itself, which is essentially just a shell at this point, um, just sort of holds everything together. Um, the brake does have some significance and the shell does have geometry machined into it, but um, a lot of the important geometry um, that separates it from other products is in these inserts. Um, so how we did that, uh, essentially, created a just a massive hole down the bore of the brake and we just have these little cylinders uh, that we just machine all of the geometry that was difficult to do. Um, we do it externally and then we just place these inserts into the brake now. Um, and what that allows us to do is it allows us to have these giant nozzles as you can see. Um, a nozzle, when you're talking, talking about a muzzle brake, is essentially a funnel, but it's reversed. So instead of stuff going inwards and being funneled in, it, you know, it controls it as it's coming out. So in terms of gas, we're directing the gas exactly where we want it to go. Uh, we're allowing it to start expanding a lot sooner and earlier than it would have been able to. And as it expands, because we're controlling the pressure uh, throughout design and parameters, the gas will actually accelerate as it expands um, instead of just expanding and the pressure dropping as it dissipates. So you'll see um, instead of the gas you know, starting to expand about here as it would with a normal design, it starts to expand all the way back here and we control it and influence it with our design the entire way. Uh, we also have just a byproduct from that because of how outrageous and um, the amount of emphasis we place on the nozzles, this geometry extends forward uh, which benefits benefits us in uh, the gas. It's not able to escape out the side of the brake as easily uh, without touching a surface and being converted into fighting recoil. Whereas if we didn't have this geometry extended so far forward, it would probably end about there and the opening for the gas to escape sideways out of the muzzle brake without being used to convert into fighting recoil would be far, you know, the far greater opening and there's a far greater chance of it happening. So it's far less um, and it, it's a much more efficient design because of that. So the other two major design elements of the TMB, which aren't so much critical to the inserts, are gas deflection and surface area. So we were able to achieve these two things um, more or less without the inserts. Uh, it just makes it easier to do it with the inserts. So gas deflection, think of gas deflection as when the bullet comes out of the muzzle, it essentially uncorks the massive volume and you know pressure of gas that's coming out. It, the gas will, will flow through the muzzle brake and be propelled forward because of the velocity of the gas, the pressure of the gas and the mass behind the gas, uh, you know, the volume of gas that's traveling out of the muzzle. So think of it as a, a garden hose uh, with the, the nozzle turned all the way to a tight stream. Uh, the water wants to move forward, 
Um, it's got a lot of mass and velocity behind it. It's being pushed forward. It doesn't really want to go sideways. Uh, plenty of it does, but you know, a significant and the majority of it uh, moves forward. So when we apply the same sort of theory to gas and gas deflection, um, the gas, once the, uh, once the muzzle, you know, the bullet uncorks it and the gas starts to flow out, it is propelled forward there's a blast and the gas doesn't really want to go sideways and it doesn't really go sideways some of it does but the majority and a significant amount moves forward so with the elements and the design of your muzzle brake unless you control and manipulate the gas the gas is just going to move forward and be pushed through and forced through by this sheer amount of volume mass and velocity behind it so you need to manipulate it and force it left or right. And when you do that, you're able to convert that gas into fighting recoil instead of causing recoil um, from that gas exiting the muzzle because that's where a significant amount of the recoil comes from, the sheer volume of gas coming out of the muzzle if that makes sense. So gas deflection is essentially these massive V-shaped features. Uh, the nozzle certainly helps, so that will exp get the gas expanding earlier so that it's easier to deflect left and right. It will put the gas essentially where we want it to be, and these massive V-like features will physically split the gas left and right, forcing it left and right, and stopping it from moving forward and pushing through the muzzle brake because that's what we want. We essentially want all of the gas that comes out of the muzzle to not go through the muzzle brake. We don't even want it to go into the second port. We want all of it to be deflected left and right and come out of this first port. But that's physically impossible. Um, so we just got to try and make as much of it do that as possible. And the bigger these gas deflection features, and the more we can get it to expand with the nozzles, the better. Um, so once we get the gas deflected left and right, then we have to do something with it, and that's where the surface area comes into it. So we've got a massive amount of surface area that the gas is pushing onto and imparting forward force onto uh, as it's being deflected left and right, which is reducing recoil. We then have these uh, very large pockets. Um, think of them as like sails on a boat, which catches the gas. It forces all of the gas into a singular point, increasing pressure as it does. And uh, that fights a lot of recoil as well. Then we have uh, massive uh, surfaces here as well that the gas has to continue to contact on its way out. And that again creates more recoil fighting energy. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the nozzles, the gas deflection and the surface area. So let's sort of visualize um, with some uh, flow simulations of other, other muzzle brakes and it will sort of tie into and make sense once you visualize um, you're able to digest easier what's going on here and why. So this is a traditional um, old school muzzle brake with like a, a half inch um, length opening for the first port and they slowly get a little bit smaller. So with a design like this, you're essentially letting the gas just expand and flow through the muzzle brake and you're just trying to catch it as much as possible on these surfaces. As you can see, uh, the gas does expand and just dissipates and just flows out the side of the brake. Um, so there's, there's plenty of expansion, but it's just doing whatever it wants. Uh, you're not really manipulating it with the design at all. Um, and you're just catching it a little bit on these surfaces as it flows through. Um, so each of these mock-ups that I've done, um, I've got four timestamps uh, equal for each of the designs and you'll see as the gas flows through the muzzle brake uh you know 
plenty of it does catch on these surfaces, but a significant amount of it as it expands just blasts out the sides and really isn't converted into fighting recoil at all. Um, which does give you the benefit of less blast to the shooter, um, but it's not really in the grand scheme of things when you're chasing recoil reduction a good benefit because yeah you're just allowing the gas to just dissipate and just go wherever you're catching a little bit of it and uh yeah sure um less blast will come back to the shooter which will be more pleasant but it's simply because a significant amount of gas is not being used to fight recoil and it's just blasting out the front of the muzzle brake so uh, yeah that's that's where um the whole reduce blast, reduce concussion design sort of comes from. Um, yeah, there's not much influence from the design at all. Um, they're effective enough, um, they'll get the job done, but for example, a design like this has around 40% more recoil than it's handy. So the next uh, design example is like a Terminator brake or an APA brake. Uh, a typical 40 degree um, rearward cut design with uh, what they call like a tooth in the middle, uh, which is you know gas deflection. Uh, it works quite well. These have been you know industry leading for the last five to ten years. These are the types of brakes I ran before the TMB, and they are what I would run if I didn't have the TMB. They're very effective uh, for how simple they are. Uh, there's a few critical design elements that um, you know needed to be improved when I started making the TMB, um, and they become pretty apparent when you see the TMB compared to this. So uh, the gas deflection here, where the the tooth meets the edge of the bore and meets the uh, the sides of the port, they all converge sort of on the edge of the bore. Um, so in terms of gas being deflected and not escaping down the bore and through the muzzle brake, it still does. Uh, it's a bit of a wasted opportunity, but it's difficult to do, again, constructing all of this geometry from the outside. So these designs do a great job of it um, with how simple they are. And you'll see as you move through the muzzle brake, through the timestamps, it's significantly more efficient than the straight cut brake. Um, way less of the, ga the gas escapes out the side without being used to fight recoil and um, it expands in a more controlled and influenced manner um, but yeah there still is quite a bit of improvement to be done once you look at the actual TMB so TMB you can see the gas is pretty much being manipulated and being put exactly where we want it to go so um, it's not escaping through the bore, uh, it's expanding, it's being put and forced directly into these pockets and as the gas is escaping out the side ports, um, very little that is not touching a surface and not being converted into recoil fighting energy. So of the four timestamps that we go through, you'll notice that we're on the second port, but we're still bleeding off gas and we're still using gas on that first port, which is very significant. Um, and it just shows how much more efficient the TMB is. Um, the other designs were on the third port moving on to the fourth and we're still not done with the first port. Uh, this is important because the first port does about 60% of the work of a muzzle brake. Um, and the more gas you get coming out of that first port, without allowing to escape through the muzzle brake, the more recoil reduction you're gonna have and the more efficient the brake is gonna be. So you can see, uh, this is a perfect example. The, uh, the nozzle retains pressure. You can see how high the pressure is here. Um, it's putting the gas exactly where we want it. It's all being deflected left and right. It's not escaping through the brake and the, the gas that is exiting the brake is always touching a surface and being converted into recoil fighting energy. Um, we did six more. Um, we did six in total, just to show you, and we're still not really 
fully onto the third port here. Um, this just goes to show how much more efficient the, the TMB is. But yeah, um, this, these visualizations make it a lot easier for you to digest exactly what's happening to the gas and how you can see um, the gas is actually being manipulated. And um, yeah, it, it really does show you how the TMB kind of has to be um, the leader in recoil reduction because other designs simply don't do this and other designs simply can't be this efficient um, just with how they're constructed. Um, so yeah, it's no wonder that our closest competitor has 20% more recoil and the TMB is you know, the industry leader for recoil reduction. But yeah, hopefully um, this answers a lot of your questions. Um, this sort of, you know, allows you to understand what's going on. And uh, we're going to do a lot more videos like this. Hopefully a few more that are a bit more exciting than this and me just, you know, playing with a screen and everything. But um, yeah, let us know what other content you'd like to see and uh, I'll do my best to get it out there for you guys. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.